I'm reading from my novel, Pursuit, a Victorian Entertainment, published in 2021. It is part of a two-part novel. The second part, Pursued, Lillian's story, was published in 2022. It's a duology, which means it's two novels in one, or one novel in two. I'm going to be reading from the first part. It's a little boy, or someone remembering when he was a little boy at the age of five or six, and it's set in London in 1874. I was about to fall down right there in some doorway to sleep when I spotted a few boys hurrying in a particular direction, and I followed them to Bishopsgate Railway Terminus. Adjacent to it, via a little wooden doorway, turned out to be an enormous construction site of what would in a year or more become the Liverpool station, the grandest in all England. There the boys entered, then slid under some wooden hard beams and were quickly out of sight. I followed and entered into a Herculean excavation. I saw the lads walking, headed toward one particular area and I followed them. I soon came to where early building of what would be the lowest portion of the new railway terminus was already in progress. Of course, there was a night watchman and a dog, but they were old and half deaf. And anyway, the place was gigantic, bigger than all of London, I thought, I who had seen so little of it. So I did what I saw the other young boys doing. I climbed up until I was on a high rafter, out of sight of the watchman and the dogs. And then I wedged myself into a space and there I slept. Soon my food gave out and my money. And it was then I remember seeing a little knot of the dirtiest boys all gathered about in one portion of the terminus site, which was that best covered with canvas against the weather. These were called by the others Grimmins lads. Unlike the other boys and men, who scattered like so many black beetles at the approach of dawn, these lads remained as they were in a group of 10 and were met by a horse-drawn dray at morn, which took them away. After nightfall, I was told, it brought them back there to sleep. Unlike the rest of us too, they were a compact and unified group, staunchly defending their little territory and sharing drink and victuals amongst themselves, and even lighting a fire for warmth. How they had treasoned the watchman and the dog, I never found out. Those guardians never went near them. That one morning as they gathered where they were used to meeting the dray, hunger sparked me to dare approach them. And I asked if they were going to work. Two of them about my age looked me up and down slowly. And one said, dust bins. Before I could utter more than, might I come work there too at dust bins, we heard the clopping of a well-shod horse and it pulled up and they all clambered into the open back of the truck behind the driver. He turned around, seeing me standing there and said, what's this then? He wants to come, one of the boys I'd been talking to said. Dustbin, said I, not knowing a thing of what I was saying. Well, then, let's take a look, he said. He leapt off the truck and came to down to look me over. If the boys were the dirtiest I'd ever seen, he was the very cleanest man. He was tall and not yet 40 years of age, with yellow hair, which shone as though newly washed. His face and neck were pale, yet not quite pink and so astoundingly clear, they had a sort of glow. His jacket and coat were simple, his trousers equally so, but immaculately unsoiled. His gloves, although ecru, were the most unspotted gloves I had ever laid eyes on. Coming up to me, he spun me about like a top, then pulled up my lip as one does a horse. He felt of my arms and legs, all the time making little comments. Of the teeth, straight, he said. Of the arms, fat. 
of the legs strong. I need employment, I said. Do you now, he replied, but does employment need you? Does, he paused for dramatic effect and stared me down. Does the dustbins need you, 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 young scallop? He looked back at the boys gathered to watch. Crayfish, he shouted. How much did you earn last year? Six quid to keep for myself, the filthy boy replied instantly. Lobster tail, and you? Seven and six. Prawn? Nine and three. Nine and three, the man remarked with a little whistle. Now that's employment, my little scallop, for you are like a little, low, little, little lower tem scallop, as in the oyster. Just like a scallop, replied little oyster. We labor six days and rest, rest the seventh. This very clean man said, the sixth day is your earning. All the rest, you labor for me. For this labor, you shall receive ale, pies, broth, bread, tarts, and stews. Is this satisfactory, my young scallop? It's satisfactory, I said. Good. I am Andrew Marvell Grimmins. Yes, yes, named after the great poet. You from henceforth are Scallop, and you are henceforth a Grimmins lad. Welcome him all. And so doing, he lifted me with one hand and tossed me atop the others at the back of the truck. I tumbled and was pitched and pummeled in welcome by three or four lads. And soon enough, our free for all was made even more chaotic when Grimmins got on the driver's shelf and started up the dray. Then we must hold on to either side as she bucked and cavorted all the way to the dustbins. Pursuit of Victorian entertainment and pursued Lillian's story are available in bookstores all across the country and even in Canada since I was just there and saw them there and signed them and sold them. You can buy them online. You can buy them in various electronic forms and in large paperback size. So please support Saints and Sinners on Give Out Day, June 30th. I always do.